And the show's on tonight, right? It is Women's Hall. Okay. That's, I'm on that. Oh boy. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My last appearance on The Bachelor. <laughs> Hit Country 103.5, The Blaze. It's Mike in The Blaze Morning Show. Lady Annabellum dancing away with my heart. Glad to have you along. It's 818. I know I'm running a little late on a Monday. Hopefully you aren't. Uh, 43 in Paradise, 41 in Chico, 45 this morning in Oroville. Today's going to be a nice one. 69, sunshine tomorrow, uh, maybe some rain showers. And when the sun does come out tomorrow, probably a lot cooler, 52 or so. Chantel Newton's in the studio with us this morning. And uh, Chantel, is your microphone there? Okay, I got you there. Um, obviously, we know Chantel from The Bachelor, and uh, we obviously know her because of her work at the uh, funeral home. Uh, well, yeah, and... and Odd combination there, and you've got a new book out, and I want to ask you a little bit about that. I want to ask you about The Bachelor, too, obviously, for a little bit, but um, tell me about the book. It's called The Final Rose, and I, I, what made you decide you want to write a book, Chantel? Isn't that an ironic title, isn't it? Final yes, it Rose. is. Yeah, I wonder where that <laughs> came from. Gotta catch my Bachelor audience, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, I actually, funny thing, years ago, I thought about writing a book with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, him, you know, being in the funeral industry for 40 years now, I was like, you know, people need to understand kind of what funeral directors do, and I said, you have so many stories, and so it just never happened, you know, co-writing a book with my dad, and then... Once I went on Brad's season of The Bachelor, I got off and I was I was approached by a couple of different editors and they th they said you know you should write a book about being on the show and I started laughing on them. <laughs> no one really cares that much about my experience on The Bachelor and bringing Brad back and laying him on the prep table. So I said, but I've always wanted to write a book on being a funeral director and the stories I have and everything. And I think there um, a lot of people could relate to it. So um, I ran that by my editor and he said, well okay, I trust you, you know, let's go ahead and do this, and all these stories just kind of came out, and my editor was like, it was like you were meant to write this book, and it came out to 157 pages, and I'm 26 years old, and I'm like, gosh, I'm, what a life. That's <laughs> pretty good. I, I'm, I'm twice that old. I probably don't have about 14 pages worth of stuff to talk about. Well, I mean, now when you're, I, we're going to have to read the book, obviously, but I mean, I'm thinking funeral home stories have got to be... It's not morbid, is it? No, it's not morbid, but there is, I mean, it is pretty detailed. I do talk about being younger and remembering my dad leave in the middle of the night to go on a removal. I talk about my sisters and I going to the funeral home, going into the prep room, being a very, you know, young girl. And I, my dad told me when I was younger, I would ask him, I would want to see who's in the box, meaning, Ooh. like, who's in the casket. Right. And as a child, most are curious, and he would pick me up, and he would show me who's in the casket. Oh, my. And, yes. And, and that didn't freak you out. And it, I guess not, because here I am, a funeral structure. Yeah, exactly. Um, and when we'd have pets, you know, that would die, we'd have burials for the pets, and we were very open about everything, especially death with, within our family. And um, so I grew you know, it was very different growing up. And, right. Um, but I want people to read about that and to hear my stories. And then I talk about the embalming process. I do. I talk about assisting Ooh. in autopsies. I talk about being a deputy coroner and going on these removals with the sheriff department, the fire department, and transferring them back to the funeral home and then getting into the actual embalming process. Wow. And, and then uh, as part of your job, obviously, I, I would imagine there's a little counseling involved. There well. is a lot of counseling involved. I mean, we're the first, uh, the funeral director is the first person that the family meets with sometimes hours right after the death, before a therapist, before family even. And so we are there with the families at probably one of the hardest times of their life. And we're here we are arranging, you know, something really important. We're going to celebrate someone's life. I mean, sometimes it's not necessarily a celebration. It's an accidental sudden right. death. And that's the hardest I would have to say. And I talk about um, meeting with, with families and uh, the babies, you know, when someone sure. has had a baby that has died. And, and I talk about that and kind of the way as – how a funeral director feels with that too, and how it kind of, kind of is hard for us. <laughs> there, that sounds like a lot of heartbreaking stories. There is. I've had people actually tell me that they cry. I mean, I don't want people to cry, but it no. is. <laughs> there is some really sad chapters in there that I do talk about. It's a lot different than when people say, "Yeah, your show made me cry." My right. 
<laughs> My boss says that a lot on paydays. Um, now, you do have a little bit about the actual TV show in the book as I well? I do. There's one chapter that <laughs> talks about the reality show. I don't really get into this season with, with Ben or anything, because um, that was, you know, two seconds. But I do talk <laughs> about uh, being on the show. I don't use anyone's name or anything. It's, it's very brief, but it was a part of my life, and so I talk about that a little bit, and how it actually opened up, you know, the funeral industry in a way, too. And so, um, yeah, you know, but I get into some detail there as well. So do, do, do people come up to you and say, because I, I get phone calls when we were talking about this, I mean, they, they, people, why would she go on a TV show <laughs> looking for a husband? Do people? I'm sure people ask you that. Yeah. Talk to my sisters. They're the ones that signed me up. <laughs> oh, it's all their fault. My, it is their fault. <laughs> no, they're the ones that put me up to it. And uh, I had never watched The Bachelor in my life. I knew there, there were roses involved. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. My sisters just said, it'd be a great experience. You should do it. You never know. You could find love. And I just kind of went for it and did it. And do not regret it. I traveled around the world. And it brought me to kind of complete the book, too. Okay, uh, before, I, can anybody's date top the, the rooftop thing? Oh, I mean, is there, I mean, if some <laughs> no. guy wants to ask you out and says, let's go out, um, <laughs> what do you do? Um, yeah. I know, I <laughs> that date was a little much. I mean, don't get me wrong, the yeah. shopping spree was quite nice, but, um, you know, I'm a very simple girl. <laughs> Good, okay, so, yeah. I've retired from roses. Daisies are my favorite Yeah, because i got to tell you, man, I had a date set up on the roof of the radio station, a little breakfast date, and then their engineer said the radio waves are bad for you, the fireworks, the boss said, <laughs> too dry, no fireworks. And Hey, we're Chico people. It's okay. Karen didn't get the do catered donuts in in time, so <laughs> unfortunately there's going to be no date on the roof of the radio station. Um, you're going to be on uh, tonight. I, I am. The Women Tall is on tonight at 8 o'clock. Are they going to grill you? Um, you know, I do get a hot seat with Chris Harrison, and I uh, sit there and get to see the girls again. Oh, it's boy. great. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to watch, though. I mean, I think you guys will be surprised as to what happens. ABC Tonight. And finally, I want to mention this. We've got to get back to your book, because you have a book signing. The book is out and available right now. The book is out. It's at Lions Bookstore. It's at uh, Made in Chico. It's at Wildcat Bookstore. And then it's on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. And um, I'm having my first book signing when this Wednesday mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock in the evening at uh, Lions Bookstore. So hopefully everyone can come, get a book, and I'll sign it, and I'm going to have a little talk, and there'll be cookies and coffee, and it'll be fun. Okay, I noticed you're on our Facebook, too, so make sure you post another reminder for us tomorrow yes. or Tuesday or Wednesday about that, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure everybody sees it. Thank you for coming out, Chantel. Of I really course. appreciate you. <laughs> this is fun. Chantel Newton, The Final Rose. The book is out. She's on TV tonight, and a book signing coming up on Wednesday. Stick around. Rodney Atkins, Justin Moore, they're straight ahead on 103.5 The Blaze. That was wonderful.